hoses underneath the fermenters, by the way. That's how we transfer all of our beer. And these things on carts, well, the shopping carts, those are our uh, pumps to move the beer around. So we'll pump it right from the bright tank into the case, fill it up, onto a skid and into that big gray box you see sneaking out of the wall. That goes from there all the way to the wall and back. Um, that's where we keep all of our kegs and cases, a lot of, a lot of beer, a lot of beer in there. Um, from here, like I said, into the fridge and out the door, or if you go to our bottling line, every single bottle of beer that you see goes down a little tiny line, only bottled six at a time. So that thing is running almost every day for our beer to go out to supermarkets, bars, wherever it needs to go. I said making beer is very expensive. This is one of the things that a lot of people don't think about besides the equipment on the floor. So a lot of people ask me how much do those tanks cost. Those range anywhere from fifteen dollars to $30,000 per tank. Uh, that whole setup along the wall over there is probably right around 50 grand. Um, you see all the filters, those are about 10 grand a piece. Those are about 10 grand each, bottom line is a little more. But none of that is in comparison to how much the kegs cost. A keg is $150. Now, if you think about the life of a keg, we take it, clean it, bottle it, it goes into the fridge for two days. It gets picked up by our distributor, let's say Claire Rose in Long Island or Union Beer in the city. It goes to Union Beer in the city. It's where I run, I run the city for the brewery. By the way, I'm Pete. Not only do the events here, I run New York City, all five boroughs. So if you're ever in the city, make sure you're for Great South Bay, help me out. <laughs> anyway, so it goes from here into Brooklyn. It sits in their warehouse for about a week or two. From there, a bar buys it. It goes to the bar. They keep it in their side next to their fridge for a week or two, put it on tap. It goes really quick because it's so delicious. About a week later, it's empty. It goes back outside that fridge. Could sit there for anywhere from a week to three weeks. And it goes back to the distributor's warehouse. Could sit there for a week or two and then back here. So one keg of beer, we might not see back for anywhere from eight to 12 to 16 weeks. And we need enough kegs to service every bar in Long Island, upstate New York, all five boroughs of the city. So you need thousands and thousands of kegs. So even if you have 3,000 kegs, let's say, you're looking right dead around a half a million dollars just in empty kegs, um, which is pretty nuts. How do people get around this? How do all these breweries get around it? They contract brew and they lease kegs. Like I said, we make every single drop of Great South Bay right here, and we're proud of that, and we want everyone to know that. That's why I keep bringing it up. Um, we do make it all here. A lot of other breweries are able to go by contract brewing. We had to do it when we moved, but basically you sell your recipe to another brewery, they lease their kegs, you just go and check in on it, and they're making your beer for you. Blue Point Brewery blew up. In case anyone didn't know, they were just bought by Anheuser-Busch. Big payday for them was fantastic. But, so now their beer is made in Brooklyn, Pennsylvania, upstate New York, and all, I think, Michigan, Chicago, just using the same recipes, but all over, just so they can get their beer out to all those states all at once. But for now, and we have plenty of space, hopefully every drop you drink of Great South Bay will come right up the floor where you're standing right now. So that's how beer is made. That's a little bit about the brewery. Uh, this is normally where I field questions. I try and get through as long, as short as possible. So if you want to go back and drink, you can, but if you want to stick around and ask questions, you can do that. And if you're really dedicated and you want to try beer right out of the fermenter, we'll do that at the very end. Yeah. <laughs> questions first. I always got a lot of good questions and help future toys. So how many people work here? How many people work here? Good question. We have 10 full-time employees, and that includes our brewers, our sales team, and the owner. So it's the owner, we have a CFO, we have Phil who runs the place, and you have, uh, I run New York City, Johnny runs Long Island, and then you have four brewers, and then we have a part-time guy who helps out a little bit everywhere. Where do you go get top 10? Really? Uh, I might have some up there, but I'll, I can't. I'm gonna get them. Sure. Just sample cups. <laughs> what a good person. Other questions? Made of honor. I talk very Doing fast. I don't know who wants to know what, so I kind of try and hit the highlights. How do you flush everything out? How do we flush everything out? So one of the biggest expenses when we moved in here is putting in a septic system. We had to dig up the entire back parking lot and the entire front parking lot, put in giant, uh, giant, giant different septic systems, four different things. That's You need a place to put excess beer, excess waste, the whole nine. The biggest waste, which is really a shame, in New York State, we're not allowed to reuse and give to farms, but we have all this leftover malt and mash, which is really just boiled with water, there's no alcohol, and in most states, they'll take it and give it to farms. It's great, because, I mean, it's filled with nutrients, so they give it to cows, pigs, all over. Not a lot of farms in Long Island, and also it's kind of looked down upon upon the state, because they can't regulate what the farms are getting. Pigs and cows eat it, eventually they get sold, we eat it, and they can't really regulate it. So every day, every brew, we, every brew, we just put a half, this gets mixed with water, spun around for a few hours, and they just put dumpsters and trucked out of here. And then the excess beer will go out into the different pools depending on which pool it has to go to. 
We don't, we don't get the, I mean, we try and drink as much as possible. We don't really like wasting. <laughs> it really has to be bad. Yeah. What? You do a good job with that. We make sure, I mean, I used to be about 60 pounds lighter. Other questions? No such thing as a bad question while we're waiting for cups. Look at that. Cups are here. Cups have arrived. All right, I'm going to find. Go, Joanne. Uh, these are going to come out real fast, so if you want to form a line, we'll do that. I'm going to see which one is the freshest. <laughs> I'm scared. So, so, are you trying? Yeah, I'm trying. First one I do. Oh, you should start. Let's go, let's go. Obvious. I should have paid attention. I know, I didn't. This is a terrible one. I'm scared. I know, I'm scared. I got it. last time you said, hey, you got to do the beer. Dirty or a chatter. Like a, like a, like a, like a, All right, so we're going to drink our Snaggletooth Stout. Our next batch, there is a first batch in there. So you can taste the difference between the carbonated and clarified filter beer. Two it right out of the tank. Yeah. 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 Uh, another first batch of Snaggletooth Stout. Uh, anybody want to taste it? Yeah. 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 Yeah.